Cole. Trustee Healy. Here. Trustee Katsinas. Here. Trustee Milani. Here. Trustee Compass. Here. Trustee Reardon. Trustee Radishevsky. Here. Mayor Pico. Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of, of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Fiscal year 2024 budget workshop. Do we smell bad or something? Everybody's like way away from here. For the next meeting, if all the board members could shower, I'd appreciate it. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Mayor and Village Board, uh, Village board we're very excited to uh, present today um, the proposed 2024 uh, fiscal year budget. Before we begin our presentations, I want to take this opportunity to thank our incredible staff for uh, putting together this year's uh, budget. <clears throat> the uh, budget continues the Village's commitment to public safety uh, investment for infrastructure and is within the parameters of the village's financial policies. The village takes its uh, financial stewardship uh, very seriously. Um, we participate in recognition programs presented by the Government Finance Officers Association. Um, we were awarded the GFO GFOA's budget award for the 29th year uh, for their 2023 budget. Um, our 2020 audit was also recognized uh, with a certificate of achievement for excellence in financial reporting. Uh, when we complete our 2022 audit, we will again uh, submit that for recognition and we will prepare a PAFR, Popular Annual Financial Report, that's a, a digestible style format that uh, residents uh, can read and understand uh, the village's financial condition will prepare that again for 2022 and submit that for award recognition as well. So to uh, nobody's uh, surprise, um, some of the, the major challenges we had uh, with this uh, proposed budget was uh, inflation, the labor market, and uh, capital investment. In 2023, the village completed a comprehensive five-year capital and financial plan incorporating many studies and evaluations of the village's buildings, streets, parks, and other assets. This year, uh, the village has uh, also undertaken a strategic planning process to set direction for village policy, budgeting, and program development for the next five years. The um, long-term financial plan, the strategic plan, is um, just one of many that, that have been undertaken the last few years to review um, to, in order to stay on track for uh, future needs. Here's a, a sampling of uh, some of the uh, long-term plans that the village has undertaken. Um, on the right are the ones that we've completed, and uh, on the left are the ones that are in progress uh, that still need to be completed. Uh, the ones on the right uh, were instrumental in um, completing our five-year capital plan and our five-year financial plan. So moving on to revenues and expenditures, the, uh, this year's budget um, it was informed a great deal by the five-year capital plan and financial plan, and it does include the modifications to the revenues that were, uh, that were developed, and the board made some difficult choices to adopt those uh, those new revenues. So those are all incorporated um, in this budget and in the five-year plan, especially uh, particularly the, the utility tax and the uh, reductions in the property taxes uh, that were all outlined in that five-year plan. The budget does utilize some fund balance. Uh, the village's policy is to remain uh, over 20% of operating expenditures as fund balance. And the report or the budget that has been presented is ends the year at about 21.3 percent of uh, general fund or operating expenditures uh, as well. 
This is a snapshot of the overall expenditures by some of the key funds and uh, overall on a, uh, as a bottom line. Um, expenditures are planned to increase from 2023 to 2024. Uh, comparing the 23 budget to the 2024 budget, general fund expenditures are increasing by about uh, 8%. Uh, a lot of that relates to personnel services, um, mostly due to uh, insourcing and some group insurance costs. Um, recreation fund is also increasing by about 2.5%. On the capital side, capital projects are decreasing by 15.3% which is lending to an overall decrease in expenditures of about 11.4% year over year. On the revenue side, the general fund revenue is decreasing by about 1% over 2023 projections. Uh, recreation is increasing by about 2.1%. Uh, the increase that you see in enterprise funds mostly is due to the, uh, the update in the utility rates, water and sewer utility rates. As was previously mentioned, we have uh, uh, incorporated a reduction in the property tax. So the overall property tax levy is a decrease by just over $500,000. Um, there is an increase in the, the levy for the police pension of about $400,000. Um, another increase for debt service of about uh, $380,000, which uh, leads to an overall decrease in the corporate levy by about $1.3 million. We do not have uh, the levy request from the library. They're gonna request, uh, that's gonna go to their board later on this month. So if, when you see those documents uh, later on this month or when we consider the estimating levy, uh, we've plugged in a number of 5%. That's probably higher than what they are going to suggest, but that's the plug that we have right now. When we sent the, since we sent the proposed budget to you um, a few weeks ago, there have been some further refinements and, and updates. Um, those are detailed here and we presented those, uh, sent those in list form earlier as well. But many of these are refinements and updates um, relative to projects that are typically in flight or things that are just refinements for new information that you know, we had a, we hired an employee, so we've updated the exact salary and things like that. Uh, this budget uh, continues our plan, our existing plan for the utilization of debt for capital projects. Uh, in 2024, we are planning to borrow just over $18 million for general corporate purposes or for uh, general governmental uh, projects and about $8 million for projects in the water and sewer fund. Uh, there is about $2.3 million in debt that's associated with the Main Street Triangle TIF. That's for a utility project that would only occur if there's a development agreement that spe specifically is relating to the uh, re utility relocation that's in the Main Street Triangle right now. <clears throat> the board is aware, but um, maybe for uh, the, uh, if anybody is uh, watching or is going to be watching, uh, the, there are two elements um, to the budget, the um, operating budget and the uh, capital improvement uh, budget. The operating budget provides access to general financial information for the village. It contains estimates of the total resources expected to come into the village and the total appropriations to fund village services. Each fund and anticipated revenue and expenditure budgets are described within the operating budget, including explanations of any major increases and decreases of budget amounts. The, the resurfacing of street or flooding improvements are examples of a capital improvement project. The capital improvement budget also displays the anticipated funding sources and financing, financing plan for the project. This year's budget includes the village's robust investment, continues the village's robust investment in road infrastructure. As well as uh, the continued investment in village facilities. <clears throat> Other notable capital projects include um, the Centennial Park West and Schuessler Park improvements, 
the Tinley Creek bank stabilization, and a number of multi-use paths. The village's commitment to historic preservation continues with um, the projects that were previously approved for um, the Humphrey House, for Bowley Farm, and for Stellwag. As the village board is aware, over the past few years, a lot of resources have been devoted toward upgrading the village's IT infrastructure. Uh, uh, this budget continues, will uh, help us close out our ERP, not this year, but the following year. And um, we're also looking to extend some fiber optic network for the gun range, for the training center gun range. One of the uh, long-term plans that was undertaken was a water rate study. Investing in water security and stormwater management continues to be a priority for the village. These are some of the uh, projects that we'll be uh, undertaking. Another long-term assessment that was undertaken was a vehicle replacement strategy. The proposed budget maintains progress towards this strategy. So next steps, um, today we're having our budget workshop. On November 6th will be the uh, tax levy determination. That is uh, setting the maximum uh, tax levy. Um, the board uh, at its uh, December 4th uh, board meeting can reduce it even further, but it can't go above the maximum. And then we'll also be requesting the resolution to publicly display the uh, proposed fiscal year budget uh, at the November 6th uh, meeting. And then the, uh, it is anticipated that the overall budget and all, all other elements of it will be uh, uh, placed on the December 4th uh, Board of Trustees meeting. That's our, our overview. And then we're just gonna now go into uh, individual departments. But if anybody has any questions regarding the general overview, well, we're, we're happy to answer. Mr. Chairman. Um, just uh, going back to the, the things that we removed, um, do we have a, I know we were heading forward with the uh, village-wide organizational assessment and then we decided to put the brakes on it, I, but we never really got a reasonable explanation as to why. I was just curious why we're not including that in the budget. Um, <clears throat> because uh, we as a board, um, so I, I polled the board members and said, hey, that's not something we need to spend $407,000 and the same thing goes for the police. Uh, organizational assessment as well. We should look at things internally before we spend a half a million dollars given the situation that we're in. Okay. Guess I missed that conversation. So next up is uh, communications and marketing. Nabia, please take it away. So I want to start off by saying that um, it's been a great year for communications and marketing. Uh, we've got a lot done, and um, I want to thank uh, the board and administration for supporting us in all of our endeavors. Uh, we're a small team of three. It's myself and Chris Gear and Vince Doria, who's up there in the control room. And with the support of the board and administration over the course of 2023 and even before that, um, one of the things that we've done is we're able to live stream meetings such as this. Without the assistance of stacking a telephone on boxes or, you know, somebody hiding in a corner, we've got this state-of-the-art um, communication system and we're able to reach the entire community and beyond, uh, live broadcasting on our cable channel and uh, YouTube and all of our social media. So it's, thank you, that's fantastic. Um, social media is a huge part of what we do. It's how we uh, most effectively reach the community, uh, business and residential community. Um, regionally, we are top in our field. We reach more people than anybody else around us. So we're happy with how it's going and we're just always looking for new ways to improve. We presented not too long ago our strategic communications plan. It's going well. Um, we're working directly with all village departments on a monthly basis. Um, to implement the, the um, details of the guide, of the plan. 
And um, we still have some work to do and some, you know, details to iron out, but so far it's working beautifully. We've done six publications so far this year. Um, one new publication that we're working on, if you recall, um, two years ago we did a new resident guide. We are working on a new business guide with the same type of eases and um, tips to get started if you're a new business in Orland Park, just like if you're a new resident moving to Orland Park. You know, who do you turn to for permits? Who do you talk to at the village in order to get things moving? Uh, a lot of people don't know, you know, the steps that it takes and every community is different. So I, we think that it will help in the process of welcoming new businesses to the community. Videos. Um, I know that everybody's a fan of uh, Vince's videos. Uh, he does a great job. This year we added a lot of animation. Um, we're working with village departments to kind of give a different view or deliver a different type of message so we don't have so much speaking like we're doing today to visually present a lot that we have to offer. We have a wonderful relationship with local media. Um, between the three of us, we probably talked to somebody from, you know, we don't have a lot of options in print anymore, but as far as our digital media, all of our publications um, go to our local media as well as our, as our residents and commercial entities. And then they are very, very good about reaching out if they have questions. There's no, you know, there's no red tape to cut through. They just give us a call, ask the questions, and we've got a really great open relationship with them. Looking forward, we're going to continue with the one voice communication method as outlined in our strategic communication plan. Um, we're all, like I said, we're always looking for ways to improve communication. Um, there's a lot of miscommunication out there, so we're still working on ways to battle that, but I think we're getting there. I think uh, as, far, as long as we stay on top of it and battle it as soon as it's put out there, social media is a great example, get out there and say, no, that is not you know, the truth. Here's what the truth is and make sure that we make it available to them is a big part of that. Yeah, so in the end, if, there's, if you have any questions, just let us know, but I think I mean, like I said, this year has been a great year where, where it got a lot of forward moving momentum, but I think we've done pretty well. We're looking forward to what we're gonna accomplish in 2024. Next up is uh, Steve in Development Services. Thank you. Now, question, we're going through all these highlights. Are we going into the individual details of these budgets at this point? Uh, nope, this, that we were, uh, Right now, we're just doing the uh, the very high level. If there are questions okay. regarding um, specifics, we'll be you know we'll be happy to sit down with anybody. Well, I mean it's the budget meeting, so I, that we're not going to sit down. We'll just talk about it. <laughs> but we're all here. Okay. Okay. So. <clears throat> This last year, we have been very busy, as many of you know. Um, our number of permits have gone up, which I'll show you in a second. We also have a lot of parallel projects going on. Um, we have contacted all of the potential owners that were property owners from the annexation study. Um, we've had conversations with some of them, so we'll be getting back with you this year on next steps. One of them is gonna come in voluntarily sooner than later. We're still working with a few others. Um, and then we'll bring a policy decision to you whether to move forward on the um, involuntary annexation of those other parcels. Uh, we've been working very, very hard on implementing our part of our ERP with Tyler. Um, we're hoping to go live this year. We have got a very large number of hours with a lot of staff time to get that going. Um, we did complete our assessment of our own procedures. We're working those into the Tyler process so that we can make sure that we don't program bad policy or bad procedures. Um, our, my assistant director, Carrie, has been working, she's been taking the lead on that. She's been doing an incredible job. Uh, we are gonna be working on getting some of the accreditations um, that we're, we've, we've mentioned that uh, VMO has asked us to pursue and you guys have endorsed. And <clears throat> we have also had a very large number of staff turnovers and we've been filling those positions. So I've got a great team right now and I'm looking forward to this coming year. So our permits are back up again. We had a, a, lot, a robust number of permits during COVID. Um, then we had some kind of weariness. With a lot of people did the improvements and the economy wasn't quite going again. So year to date, um, 
based off of this trend, we're probably gonna be up around the 4,000 mark again. Um, more of these are on the commercial side, which is good. So we're seeing reinvestment. Um, our appearance reviews are still really strong. So that's again, the changes that are happening to the exteriors, which is stuff that the base that we present to people that are coming through our town. Um, very, very large number of inspections. Again, I have a full staff of inspectors now, so we're, we're catching up um, on our inspections. 150 new businesses as of the middle of October. And um, we've also been, we will have all of our inspections done prior to business license renewals um, before the end of the year. A lot has happened. And the, what's great about this list is it's kind of across the board. So we see a lot of new construction investment, reconstruction investment on the commercial side. We see residential projects. We see industrial projects. Um, we see renovation of office product, as well as our own um, projects, which are part of our capital plan in the parks. And we'll be moving forward with some additional um, improvements this coming year that are village projects. Uh, Wild Fork, just want to let you know that they are going to be tearing the building down where IHOP was, so they will be moving forward. Um, we do have movement again on CubeSmart, which is good. Uh, we continue the improvements around the mall as far as infrastructure, um, sidewalks that are going in, facade improvements, uh, additional stuff with car dealerships. So where we're headed into 2024, um, we're gonna continue to do the recommendations from our lean assessment. Again, this is the step-by-step -step reorganization. We're doing this kind of in stages so that we can kind of shake out the, the kinks before we move to the next phase. Um, we are going to be streamlining our entitlements processes. You're gonna be seeing a, a series of amendments to our codes. Again, we're gonna do this a little slower so we can make a change, see what happens, move to the next part so that we can get our permits and projects through the process faster. Um, We've been working really hard, on, again, on business retention. So Ed has been doing a great job reaching out to the business and the community. And hopefully <laughs> we will get moving on the conference plan. Um, that is our goal. We gotta get Tyler done first, uh, and then we'll be, we'll be heading into that. All right, that's what I got for you. Thanks. All right. Um, next is uh, Krishid and engineering. Krishid, is your microphone on? No, it's on. It's on. Okay. Um, I'd like to start with uh, mentioning three projects where we have made solid progress. So. First one is 143rd Street. We finally got approval from the IDOT that we can actually proceed with the final design of phase two. So we're literally uh, in a day or so, I will have a kickoff meeting. Spur two, uh, the first pieces are arriving on November 6th. And on November 13th, the first piece might even be in the ground. So that's a, a good solid progress we have in Schusler Park. Um, all the excavation is done, concrete pads are in place, and the first pieces arrived today for the stormwater drainage system, and the first piece will be placed tomorrow. So those are three, I just wanted to start with those, but um, we had a great, a great ground, uh, sorry, opening ceremony for 104th Avenue, which was done this year. Um, we got some great solid funding on that. You can see that over there. I just mentioned to you about 143rd Street. Phase two is in progress. Um, land swap, we have some challenges. We're still going dealing with that uh, with Cook County Forest Preserve, but hopefully in the next month or so it will be done. Um, we still haven't re uh, get received final paperwork on our $7 million congressional grant, but it should be on its way. Uh, 143rd Street and John Humphrey Drive intersection in Land Bridge. We're very close to finishing phase two design. I expect that later next year, 2024, we'll be going out for bidding. We have $3 million in grants on that project, and then the rest is expected to come from the village funds. Next slide, please. Dr. Marsh was completed as well this year, and it was open, and it's in, currently in operation. Um, vintage crossing drainage, we're done with our part. We still have to deal with the homeowners that we are currently dealing with. Um, but currently that about 
Out of the 10, one homeowner has already made improvements that are required by the village. Nine are in the uh, municipal court. Tinley Creek Bank stabilization, we have 90% uh, easements in our uh, possession. There are six properties that have not given us um, easements, and the village attorney is in the process of um, going through the MNN domain. We were able to successfully uh, uh, convince MWRD to keep the $3.7 million construction funds that we have until the end of 2025, and hopefully by then we will be in construction or about to start construction. 167th Avenue bike path is also in the final stage, and um, uh, again, about $1.75 million, we have it in grant, and I expect that late next year we should be going out for bidding or so. I just mentioned to you about SPUR 2. Um, SPUR 2 will have one year of construction season, so by next fall, we should be wrapping that up project. Uh, and then T, con T connection as another layer of our re redundancy at the pump station uh, will be going out for bidding in about four weeks. I think the rest of you already know about the ADA and the Parking and Traffic Advisory Committee. Next slide, please. Just a couple other things that we are assisting. We are uh, assisting uh, parks uh, with the Schusler Park project and um, we're doing you know, the things that we were doing in-house before, just uh, uh, engineering reviews in-house and data collection are in-house as well. This is, I think, an, uh, an, uh, a slide that would be interest to all of us. Um, these, these are in the next four years up until 2027, we have about $24 million, over $24 million in secured funding. We actually have 26 million, but as the board has directed us to cancel the Wolf Road project, which has $2 million secured, which would go away with that. But we would also have to pay our share of about $400,000 back to federal FHWA. But um, so as of now, we have about $24 million secured in our funds, and then there will be additional funds will be provided by the village as matching shares. Next slide, please. 153rd and uh, Ravinia Avenue roundabout is um, in is uh, in the final stages of uh, phase one, and we have in scheduled interviews for um, phase two that will be happening in the next uh, week or two, and then we'll be bringing back a contract for you. I would say six weeks from today, uh, we have about 1.75 million dollar for that project in uh, secured funding as well. So. Uh, I think that project will be able to build uh, with uh, federal funding with, with our share. 167th Avenue bike path. Again, I mentioned that in the details. Um, next place, please. 82nd Avenue bike path, that also is going well. We are in phase one. We had public uh, information meeting just last week, Thursday. Um, all in all, uh, most people want it except that the people who live on the east side, they want it on the west side. The people who live on the west side, they want it on the east side. But they, in general, they, they want the project. And we have $1.5 million in construction funding secured. McGinnis Slough, that will be a very uh, uh, picture stick type uh, project that we are in phase one, wrapping up in phase one, and we'll be getting into phase two. We have some funds, about $240,000 for phase two and about $1.5 million in construction funding. Uh, we're currently doing a water, stormwater, and sanitary capacity study. Um, as we have shared that we, previously with you, we have about 2,000 acres of undeveloped land in the village, and we just do not have a clear understanding of how much water, how much sewer, and how much drainage is needed for those large pieces of parcels. So we're going to complete a study that will give us a pretty good idea that includes the land along the south side of our village, uh, the I-80 corridor. 159th and 94th, as you know, that is the most um, uh, dangerous intersection in our village. We're, we're completing a study on that, and once we have that in our hands, what recommendation needs to be made, we'll be bringing it back to the village for approval, but we also have to work with IDOT as well as Cook County because all three of us have jurisdiction at that intersection. Um, I already mentioned to you, Wolf Road is uh, 
in the process of canceling it. It is not as easy as we thought it that to cancel a project. It's quite a process to go through uh, IDOT as well as FHWA, but we are on that path. Historical project preservation is in progress. Any questions? Trustee Radishevsky. I have a question. Can you elaborate on the four hundred thousand dollars that we have to pay back? Like, why? Where is that coming from? So we received four hundred thousand dollars in grant money from FHWA to conduct phase one study. And anytime you receive federal money, but you do not proceed with land acquisition or construction of a project, then that money has to be given back. And in this case, that's what we're doing. It's a decision we made as a board because the 400000 was pennies compared to how much money we'd have continue to be flushing down the toilet for a project that's 25 or 30 years away. Yeah, one of the challenges, and we saw this with the Southwest Highway and 143rd Street project, uh, Krishid and his team were able to secure $7 million from the federal government, and we just needed IDOT, oh, seven, seven million plus another million and a half. And we just needed IDOT to come up with three million and they couldn't even come up with that. Uh, Wolf Road, the estimate is $100 million, right? Construction cost is $100 million. Yeah, so if they can't come up with the three million, um, and these, these engineering studies, they have a shelf, shelf life. So after a certain time, you'd have to spend all that money again to get it re-engineered. Yeah, we had gone through all that at, at the board level, um, I don't know, back in what, May or June, um, that Essentially, we'd be paying for this millions of dollars for this study, and we're out the money for that. And then it's going to be, it's going to be expired. We're going to have to do it again. Probably going to expire one more time. Then it'll be done again. And in the meantime, let's just pay back the 400 grand rather than spend it. And the stuff we've already done is still sitting on the shelf. It can be updated, whether it's 10 years from now or 20 years from now, it can still be updated. So why keep updating it? And and paying back the 400 is there's no Krishita's working his magic. Um, yeah. And he's on commission, so anything he saves, <laughs> he gets a penny back. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And we are. Definitely we are. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Trustee Katsinas. I just wanted to thank Krishid for all the hard work you and your staff has done securing those grants. That's a lot of money and a lot of savings to the taxpayer. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next up is the finance department. Thank you. Uh, first, I just want to say thank you to uh, the board for providing a lot of good direction uh, to the village and financial leadership. Also to de uh, department directors, uh, making this year's budget process, I think, easier than in the past. And your input and feedback throughout the process has been uh, valuable. Um, this year we added, um, thanks to a suggestion from uh, Chris Frankenfield, uh, we added some our budget base coaches, and they're sitting over there, uh, Brandy Watson, Chris Frankenfield, and Joanna Janik. They uh, helped departments throughout the budget process. Um, they, and that by in doing so, helping me uh, coordinate uh, what I need to do. So thank you guys for all the work that you've done. Um, just want to highlight a couple of things that the finance department is particularly proud of. We've done, made a lot of accomplishments uh, over the past year, um, but just some real key highlights I think uh, is telling for uh, the village as a whole. We maintained a AA plus rating with a stable outlook, uh, given the, the fact that we remain in Cook County and in Illinois. Uh, that is, a, that is a, something to, a feather in our cap that we continue to um, keep that, uh, that status. Um, also, the five-year capital and financial plan. Uh, not many communities have such a robust and funded plan, um, and it's really, really very well thought out um, with the, the programs that are in place to set us up for uh, long-term success and the, uh, how we approach that entire project. It's um, a remarkable accom accomplishment. Um, on our customer service team, uh, they are really leading the charge on the finance side of our water meter conversion process uh, project. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Joe will talk about that as well. But converting all those meters in the system that we currently have um, is nothing short of miraculous. They've done a, a really heavy lift, uh, getting the data conversions uh, where they can, and then, quite frankly, doing a lot of data entry and manual work, and really without missing a beat um, throughout their customer service process. 
um, and updating all of the records. It's really gonna set us up for success with our utility billing uh, system conversion next year. Um, another thing that I'm particularly proud of is we started our fiscal fitness uh, educational program. Um, we held our first session today on fraud mitigation uh, training through, uh, throughout the organization. That's something that um, I think is, a, is you know, helping the financial literacy throughout the organization when it comes to government finance is something that can only help the organization as a whole. We started that, uh, had our first session today, and I think it went very well. So I'm very happy about that and looking forward to that, expanding that program in the future throughout the, uh, uh, in the coming years. As we look forward, we continue to um, look to get the GFOA Triple Crown. As mentioned earlier, that's the Budget Award, the Audit Award, and the Popular Annual Financial Report uh, Award. Um, looking to finish up or actually start our utility billing uh, system conversion in 2024 and concluding that in 2025. Uh, and finalizing uh, all of the loose ends throughout our finan Tyler Financials conversion. There's a few things that are hanging out there that just need to be uh, buttoned up. Um, they just take some time and we're continuing to work on that, but looking forward to that. Also, uh, a couple of big uh, co uh, contracts, the Village's banking contract, uh, we're gonna uh, look to go out to market for that, for those services and bring that back in the, in the coming months. Um, that that's going to be, uh, I think, a big change if we do, in fact, change our banking institutions. This would be a monumental change for us. And uh, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, ongoing process improvement. I say to my staff every day, everything, let's look at everything. If we can be doing it better, let's, do a, let's find a better way to do it. We don't have any ownership in the way things are being done. I want it to be done the most effective and efficient way as possible. Um, and that's something that we live by every day to see if, uh, you know, the best way that we can be doing things. Um, so I, you know, again, I thank, thank my staff for continuing that effort um, to really look at the way we do things and to provide the best service, not just to our residents, but to our other internal customers, that's our, our departments, our employees, and all the decision makers throughout the organization. Um, happy to answer any questions about what we have going on in finance. Regina, you're up. Thank you, George. Good evening, Mayor, Village Board. Um, first and foremost, as support staff for the entire organization, I wanna thank the other directors, the Mayor, Village Board, and administration for supporting the initiatives and us, our entire department, and everything that we do in working alongside with us every day. Um, as you know, throughout this past year, HR has provided continued support to all departments, employees, and leadership within the organization. We will remain progressive as we move forward into 2024 with the introduction of a new standardized 30-day employee onboarding policy and procedure, expansion of employee recognition projects to include documenting a village-wide recognition policy guide as developed by the Lead Forward team. Thank you, Lead Forward team, for your partnership and leadership as well. In addition to promoting a campaign in support of accepting individual responsibilities and maintaining positive relationships with others while furthering others' successful, proven leadership and professional growth initiatives. Working hand in hand with our finance and IT friends, in the training and maintenance of Tyler HRM. In addition to completing the implementation of Tyler Recruiting uh, with a go live date expected to be during the second quarter of 2024, we are encouraged to support staff education of new streamlined data management processes. Lastly, it's important for me to note that as we continue to embrace employee training and development, we strive to strengthen employee engagement with a focus on well-being. This will improve the employee experience, which will ensure enhanced productivity, which we all are looking for in every employee of the organization, and satisfaction in turn, maximizing the village's human capital to achieve its broader objectives. Thank you very much.
All right, Tad, our newest uh, director, you're up. I want to start off by thank you for having me here and for um, providing all of the support and infrastructure to have a robust and secure IT department. Um, the past year, we've had a lot of successful um, updates on the security side of things, like the complete security audit, which came back um, with very minimal issues, which is pretty much unheard of. It's, so it goes to show how uh, much you guys have uh, invested in providing uh, good, secure systems for the village. Um, besides security updates, we've had other major deployments um, that have affected all departments of the village. Um, including some of the AV stuff. Um, we're starting the kickoff of the O365 migration, so we will be, um, as George likes to say, kicking and screaming into the 20th century. Um, so that way we can get everybody up to date on better communication tools and um, office tools. Um, moving forward for next year, we have the continuation of the Tyler deployments, which affects every department within the village um, with cashiering, HRM, permitting, and licensing. Um, we also are looking at adding fiber, extending fiber to um, the new EOC slash police training gun range. Um, for general funds, um, we still have a lot of stuff that we're paying for that are, are very important to keep our village running properly, um, including the, the network dis uh, detection response services, um, our Tyler maintenance, um, GIS, and O365 work. Um, we have a couple of things that we're rolling over, such as um, O365 migration, which we're kicking off now, but it's a rollover from this year, and password management. Um, we have not been able to deploy this year with everything else on our plate, so that's being a rollover. So, um, that's really all I have right now. Questions? And what a change, right? We would, in previous budgets, how much time would be spent on uh, all the IT infrastructure? And as Tad has said, um, kudos to the board for knowing and, and acknowledging how important that is. And uh, the proof is in the pudding with that security uh, audit that was done, like Tad said, very minimum. So uh, there's still uh, work to be done, uh, but uh, we're on a much more solid footing now. Um, yeah, so when I arrived here, I, you, you, many of you have heard the story about talking to our then IT director who'd been here for six months, and I just looked at him and said, how, how much can you eat in one year? And we basically gave him that, and then we gave him that the next year, and then we gave Dave Buick that for several years. It took us th this long to get here. Some of you, three of you, it seems like the tech, com the tech commission is the avenue to the village board, um, but three of you were on the tech, the newly created tech commission that didn't exist prior to my arrival. And uh, so you saw it firsthand um, how little we've had. So we've come a very, very long way to a place where instead of asking you how much can you take in one year, it's like, okay, now what do we actually need um, to, to keep things on going because we've already made all those investments. So uh, good job for this board and the previous board as well because they were fully supportive in a time when we were cutting um, of still making sure that we found money for um, IT to get us on board uh, up to speed because we knew we needed it. Our favorite police chief is up right now. Somebody else? George? Yeah. First, I want to Somebody say. Somebody else come in? <laughs> <laughs> First, I want to say uh, thank you to the mayor and the village board for all the continued support over the years. Um, not only do we have the best police department in the state, but this team in the village is the best team that you could have. Um, our, our budget is mainly operational. Um, again, thank you. Uh, we have one capital project in 2023 that we completed, which was the uh, outdoor weather warning systems, which was at its end of life, built in the 1980s and piecemealed. So now we have it uh, up to date. Um, it was completed in March. Uh, we also went through our second reaccreditation tier two through the Illinois mm -hmm. Law Enforcement Accreditation Program, uh, where we're evaluated on our policies and procedures. Um, there's a two-day on-site assessment, and we received that also in March. Our continued low crime rate, um, continue to keep crime low here in the Village of Orland Park, as we've done in the past 25 years. And we work with uh, Orland Square Mall to 
keep our residents safe, our businesses safe, and with their help, they installed, at no cost to the village, flock LPR, license plate reader cameras, at all of the uh, entrances uh, into and out of Orland Square Mall, where we're alerted to any stolen vehicles that may come, uh, any alerts that are put on, any retail uh, crime groups that are coming out to Orland Square. So, One of so, our ch so Chief, the uh, when we hear, uh, and we all have seen it on social media and everything, about how dare we protect the mall, one, they're a taxpayer, and two, they actually provide a lot of stuff for us that we don't pay for. Right, yep. This is a huge, great initiative. We meet with the mall regularly, and this was something that they're doing, at, at, that Simon's doing at other properties, and I uh, I looked into it and asked them if, if it was possible to, to bring it to Orland Square, and they did. So that was great, great for the community. Um, one of our 2024 initiatives is this FUSIS Real-Time Crime Center, which I'm really excited about. This is going to grow not only in 2024, but for years to come. This is a, a real-time, real, live information that we can get back to our officers on the street. If we have uh, a crime occurring, we can pull up cameras from not only businesses, but residents that participate in this program and get that information back to uh, our officers. It's already been a success. We've started it. Um, we're working with the school districts. We, we have the Orland Square Mall on board, and we're going to push this out, and we're going to continue to grow this uh, every single year. Um, two years of funding we received through a grant, so at no cost to the village the first two years we're, we're incorporating this, and then we'll continue to seek grant funding uh, for this program. Some additional 2024 initiatives. Uh, we're looking to upgrade the public safety grade, uh, grade radio system and microwave, microwave network which will be presented at the November 6th Committee of the Whole, so more information to come on that. Uh, we, are, we, we spoke about the new training facility, EOC backup dispatch, and one of the things is we're looking to, uh, on officer safety initiative, we get buy-in from the officers, you know, what do they need on the street to keep them safe, and uh, we purchased some rifle and ballistic shields uh, this year in 2023, and in 2024 we're looking at light, lighter body armor uh, and also uh, ballistic helmets, and ballistic rifle plates for the officers, so, so keep them safe. But it's good to get buy-in from the officers on what they need, and we pre appreciate your support uh, in keeping them safe. Thank you. All right, Joel, take it away. Good evening, Mayor and Board. Uh, I would like to first thank you. Um, about three years ago, um, when I first got here, uh, we talked about assessments, and, and you guys funded those. And George highlighted all the ones that were completed. Those were vital to public works as we set the stage to know what is our infrastructure, what is our condition of our infrastructure, and what do we need to fund. And then this past year, I want to thank you for your direction in the capital planning because that helps us lay the foundation for us in public works as we go forward. Uh, and this past year, actually, we really started a lot of those projects already. So 2023 was very successful. I don't have any particular slides for 2023 because it would make it really long. Um, but I would like to also thank my, I'm very proud of my leadership who have uh, completed those assessments, completed a lot of the project and the programming in the budget today, as well as uh, executing the, the, the plan to, for those projects. And I have a very dedicated uh, staff as well uh, in, the, in the field. And so I appreciate their hard work. I also want to thank all the uh, departments because uh, without working with finance on the budget, uh, we couldn't get this possibly done. And uh, I know I interrupt a lot of the other departments as we do our projects. So I thank them for the patience as I fix things. So um, I just want to, I'm not going to talk about all the bullets. But um, our initiatives is, I'll talk about the initiatives. And in the, our front office, we are trying to maintain a very profession, professional, efficient, and also a very safe organization in public works because of the many hazards we have for our employees. So uh, those are just some of the things that we in the front office work on. Uh, in our natural resources and facilities division, uh, Really, we're about decreasing the footprint uh, of the village, right? Uh, more footprint means more costs of old buildings. And so the plan in the capital project is about reducing those old footprint buildings, investing in the key buildings to keep 
with the projects, maintaining our parks, grounds, and trees, as well as designing future capital projects uh, so that we can execute them in the out years. Next slide. Also in, uh, in natural resources, um, there's a bunch of other projects, as you can see, uh, related to what rec department also. Uh, you can see CPAC and so forth, uh, some of the other projects. We, I couldn't fit them all in the one slide, so next slide, please. In streets division, uh, again, George highlighted a lot of these things, so continuing to maintain our neighborhood roads is our, our initiative. Uh, designing the surface transportation program funding uh, roads. Uh, finishing the Fernway types, we have two more neighborhoods. Repairing sidewalks past parking lots, replacing street signs and, and traffic signs, converting parking lot lights to LED and executing the winter operations. Those are the missions and the initiatives that we're doing this year. Uh, and equipment, we talked about re the fleet, uh, replacing the aging fleet in optimal cycles. Uh, repurposing some of the PD equipment for like Village Hall, ESDA, and CSOs, and then decreasing our inventory. We always are looking to what is getting old and, and to keeping that so it's not growing uh, unmanageable. And then we're always looking to lower our maintenance costs in BE. Next slide. Um, in water, I have two slides. Uh, we're really about maintaining our water assets through the water account. Um, we also have to meet. IEPA guidelines, so some of these are external agencies that we have to maintain our, our systems. And, and off, we need off uh, replacement equipment if to do the work sometimes. Maintaining the sewer and storm systems, uh, those are to meet IEPA and MWRD guidelines as well. And those are listed there as well. Take any questions if you have any. All right, <clears throat> Ray and recreation. Good evening, Mayor and Village Board. <clears throat> On behalf of the Recreation and Parks Department, I'd like to thank you uh, for your continued support in everything we do. Uh, we're very lucky we are the Department of Fun and we try to bring the fun to the village and our residents and, and we love what we do and I hope you see that in us. Um, tonight, I am pleased to present the um, 2024 budget highlights for our department. Uh, starting off with uh, <clears throat> just an overview of our department, uh, we do strive to enhance the quality of lives of our residents uh, who live here, um, <clears throat> those who work here, and those who uh, visit Orland Park. We think that's a huge priority of the village. George has, has stressed that as a village, and we, enhance, we embrace that in everything we do. Uh, we successfully do that, we believe, in uh, recreation programs. <clears throat> two fitness centers that have over 7,000 mem members, uh, which is very significant. Think about that, 7,000 members and two fitness centers. Our, our aquatic center, <clears throat> uh, athletic fields, which are soccer, tennis, uh, baseball, softball, football, uh, which I'll talk more about. Our facilities, which are, are numerous, uh, a, a lot of great events that the Village Board uh, supports and enjoys with us. And we do that for all age groups, from all the way from infants to us more mature adults uh, in all abilities. <clears throat> Our administration department oversees all that, so uh, most of our staff is uh, budgeted under the administrative administration budget. Uh, you can see some of the, the larger uh, expenses that are uh, this part of our department uh, um, budgets for or plans for. Uh, Centennial, Centennial Park West, so <clears throat> this project, as we know, is, is ongoing. Uh, this will be one of the biggest highlights in 2024 as it opens. Uh, conceived back in 2023 uh, and hosting concerts since 2011, uh, this van venue is finally becoming a reality thanks to this board. <clears throat> this venue will, will become <clears throat> the host of, of village future events, uh, and the, the scope of this stage <clears throat> is, a, is a high quality stage, which will meet all the requirements of any artist of any level, nationally and, and otherwise. Schuster Park also comes online in 2024. Uh, Michael, the Michael Schofield the third sports complex. Uh, the, this, uh, the athletic fields there and the tennis courts, you might remember, were badly uh, unusable due to all the flooding in this complex. The new complex brings two artificial turf fields uh, and <clears throat> allows, uh, be will become the home of our pioneer football uh, cheer and um, 
uh, as well as to other athletic organizations. Uh, the village, as a part of this, entered into a 20-year sponsorship agreement with Michael Schofield, Kendall Coyne Schofield, and the Michael Schofield Foundation in support of the complex. Uh, additionally to this complex, we're going to build a new sledding hill, so the old butt crack sledding hill will be gone, and we'll introduce a new sledding hill in the other corner. Uh, and the pond has, uh, has been drained, it's been dewatered, and it'll be dredged uh, in December, so it'll improve the quality of that pond. Uh, the, the project is on track to open in the spring of 2024. Uh, also exciting uh, in, at Schuessler Park will be the phase two part of Schuessler Park, and that is the all-inclusive playground. Uh, and this will be a playground for individuals of all abilities to play and interact together. Uh, the village is partnering with Michael Schofield III, Kendall Coyne Schofield, and the Kendall and Michael Schofield Family Foundation to raise funds in support of this project. Uh, we'll be presenting this at the board on Monday so you can get a better look at the project and the cost. Another exciting development in the future will be pickleball. Uh, pickleball is, is a huge sport in this country uh, as well as all over the world and it's finally coming to Orland Park and Dugan Park. Uh, the board earlier this year approved a uh, 10 court uh, complex at Dugan Park. Uh, in 2024, we'll be engaging in the architectural and engineering services for the development. Uh, we have applied for a $600,000 uh, IDNR uh, grant, ASLAG grant, uh, and we hope to be awarded that to support this project. Uh, depending on the funding of the project, this project will be uh, undertaken in either 2025 or 2026. Our athletic division uh, looks forward to continue to, improve, uh, to provide <clears throat> quality athletic fields uh, to our or athletic organizations as well as tournaments that love to come to Orland Park. Uh, these tournaments are good for Orland Park as they uh, frequent our businesses and our hotels, so good supports uh, for our, our tax revenues. Um, additional things we're going to be doing, and you will see this in your board update tonight, we're going to be adding some biosolids to the fields, as well as focusing on <clears throat> some uh, field enhancements to improve the turf quality. So when we improve that turf quality, we attract more use, and we keep our residents happier. So they're, they're looking forward to the, those improvements, so we're focusing on that. Uh, we'll also be focusing on uh, potentially replacing backstops, more uh, bocce ball and tennis courts, uh, as well as some of our athletic field equipment. The Recreation Programs Division, uh, this division is really all the programs uh, within our department. Uh, it operates um, in a, a net uh, capacity. In 2024, we're going to continue to focus on that net uh, and maximize that while, while reducing expenses uh, and providing quality experiences to our residents. Uh, in 2024, we will be uh, bringing the recreation campus closer to the village complex with the closing of the uh, Cultural Arts Center. Uh, we look forward to uh, engaging all of that in one complex here and maximizing the use of our facilities. Uh, FLC and the Civic Center are a tad bit underutilized, and so this allows us to bring everything uh, into one facility and create a recreation campus. Uh, the Sportsplex continues to be a strong village recreation, fitness, and athletic facility with over 3,000 members and over 6,000 visits each week. Uh, staff, look, staff look forward to continuing to serve its membership, residents, and guests through quality programs, equipment, athletic, and recreational assets. The Orland, Orland Park Health and Fitness Center is operated by P Power Wellness on the village's behalf. Uh, the Orland Park Health and Fitness Center boasts a membership of over 4,000. In 2024, the focus will be to continue to grow memberships, retain existing members, and create engagement for participants through its programs. Uh, fiscally, the focus will be uh, for the facility to cover all of its operational expenses and to develop a net that also offsets some of the capital expenses. The Centennial Park Aquatic Center, fondly known as CPEC, um, <clears throat> the priorities of this facility will remain in safety. Uh, to create great uh, perception on behalf of the village and fun. <clears throat> what's, a recreation, rec what's a recreation facility if it's not fun? And the pool certainly embodies that. And, and that fun will be for our staff uh, and for our, our patrons. In 2024, uh, these will remain our priorities as we dedicate our focus upon recruiting and training of staff to create a fun, safe, customer-centric environment in a fiscally responsible manner. Our special events division remains busy as it produces all village special events, including the Taste of Orland Park. In 2024, traditional events will return, as noted on the slide. Uh, new in 2024, uh, we'll be uh, introducing a higher level of headliner with the board's approval uh, to the Taste. 
And part of that is just to, to draw more people to the taste. Uh, the taste has a great crowd. It draws anywhere from 25,000 to 40,000 every year. Uh, we think we can do better than that if we have larger headliners, and so we want to enhance the headline experience. Uh, when we bring more people to the taste, it's also better for our restaurants, and we had done a survey with our restaurants, and that is one of the things they asked to, to do a better job at. Uh, Centennial Park West, uh, with the new venue, will we'll, um, <clears throat> realize some savings, as you can see there, from not having to run stage and electric, as well as attracting top performers to that venue. Uh, additionally, we'll be focused on sponsorships for this site, as well as other events. Our special record division, we just celebrated our uh, sports banquet last week. Thank you for those that were able to attend. It was a terrific night. Uh, next year, we'll continue to grow our, our sports uh, and work with our athletes and help them have a great quality experience. Uh, those experiences are important both for our athletes and for our families. You can see some of the things we're going to introduce next year. The Civic Center also is part of the rec overall recreation campus. Uh, we'd like to continue to focus on supporting village meetings and events as, as that is our largest facility that allows us to do that. Uh, additionally, it'll continue to host Lions Club Bingo, uh, and as well as many family uh, functions. <clears throat> you will see in the, as you see in the VBB every week, we have a lot of wedding receptions, uh, anniversaries, birthday parties, all kinds of things, and so that becomes a key facility to allow those things. Uh, we are doing some small upgrades, uh, and you can see those noted there. Uh, the Heritage Sites Division continues uh, to make progress uh, in 2024. Uh, we'll be focused upon the commitment of our, our, these assets. Each asset is having uh, some level of improvement. Uh, earlier this year, the board approved the Heritage Site Strategic Plan, and our goal is to, to enhance that plan, focus on that plan, and achieve that plan. Uh, I would like to, at the end here, again, thank the, the mayor and the village board for their support, as well as all the directors and staff of the village. Uh, while we are the Department of Fund, <clears throat> we're highly dependent on everybody in this room and all their staff, so I'd like to thank all that staff. I'm happy to answer any questions. The only comment I'll make as I walk the site today with uh, Ray out at Shushla Park, it's, uh, if you haven't been out there, take a look. It's pretty cool, the, the huge hole and the massive amounts of concrete and water stores that's being put in, and they're now putting in the... Uh, the uh, um, uh, other large pieces, how many of those are there? Like a, 800. 800 of those uh, being put in by the crane. And then if you go look at uh, the pond there, it's empty. Uh, uh, well, with the exception of a tire and a couple of coolers and a couple other things that are going to come out. But um, so, uh, and, and oh, by the way, if you're a fisherman and we get some warm weather, you might want to go over to the, uh, um, to the north, the north end of the pond because that's where all the fish are at. <laughs> So, um, but uh, yeah, it's, um, uh, so that's a very cool project. I also went out to Centennial Park West, um, where a lot of the foundation is dug and formed. Uh, so there you go, concrete tomorrow. Is it completely dug? Yeah, I didn't think so. Um, but, um, but the forms are in there, so it, it looks pretty cool. And obviously they did all of the, the piers and everything. So uh, they also have staked out for the, uh, for your paths and all of that. So, you know, get out, take a look. Um, wear a hard hat there if you, if you go. Um, keep Reed happy. <laughs> Last but not least is the uh, village manager's office. Um, and I, uh, Regina uh, talked, talked about this a little bit, but the village, like other municipalities, is a service provider. And uh, we don't make anything. We don't make widgets. We don't manufacture. Uh, we provide a service. And the, the services and the capital plan that you've seen uh, here tonight is uh, the result of a lot of hard work for some fantastic staff members. So for our highlights, um, um, uh, as the board is aware, we started a, a leadership development program uh, with a heavy emphasis on employee engagement. Um, Regina touched upon this, but the engaged employees have higher well-being, better retention, lower uh, absenteeism, higher satisfaction, and higher productivity. Uh, we are able, we are a lean organization, and we are able to provide all of the services that uh, we've been demonstrating um, with the uh, employees that, uh, that, that all pulled their weight, and, and we have a, a very good group here. In order to kind of maintain that uh, engagement, um, uh, we started a quarterly engagement session. Um, this uh, October, we had our first engagement session. We'll have our second one uh, December 8th as part of, uh, it'll also 
include our holiday party. Um, leadership development program, we had, we've been introducing a number of training uh, opportunities for our leaders. And leaders are not uh, those that just have a title as a leader, as a manager or a supervisor. Leaders are um, anybody that has the ability to influence others. And so um, from our field staff to um, you know, uh, office staff, everybody can and should be a leader. And so we um, make our leadership development program available to all our employees. And as you can see here, we've had a, a number of uh, great uh, training sessions. One of the things that is uh, wonderful about our leadership development program is that we do a lot of train the trainers. So um, in this room right here, we have a number of uh, trainers that have gone through uh, these specific topics. So we have uh, folks within our organization Within, throughout the various different buildings who, are, um, who have the resources and we can use them as a resource uh, throughout the, the year. And um, that also gets them in, uh, um, further engaged in the organization. So we're very excited about that. So some of the ongoing initiatives is, uh, I mentioned this already, the staff engagement meetings, the leadership development program, that's gonna continue. Um, Emergency action planning, it's, it's not glamorous, um, but uh, we've, made a lot of, um, we've, we've made a lot of progress on having um, uh, formalized uh, emergency action plans it, because uh, emergency action is not just police, it's not just uh, the fire department. Um, the third leg, the third major leg is public works and the, the types of um, emergency responses that we will have, you know, Hopefully we don't have any, but when you think about microbursts and uh, weather systems, police and fire are in and then they're out. And then it's our public works department that has to spend weeks there cleaning up. So uh, we, 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 are, we follow a, a total unified uh, process for emergency uh, response. And um, we wanna work out, uh, continue to work on our uh, action plan training. The board is aware we've uh, undertaken a uh, recodification process. Um, we're going to uh, review the entire uh, village code from top to bottom. It's a, a massive undertaking, but it's a healthy exercise. Uh, you know, nobody's really aware of uh, recodification ever occurring. So um, uh, you'll see progress um, as that continues. And the, uh, the other, it was mentioned a little bit, but accreditation. Um, Every department will be going through some sort of accreditation. Our police department is a re-accredited um, agency, but um, uh, accreditation is, um, is a best practice, and what it uh, requires us to do is to self-assess. Um, we, we have to spend time looking at our policies and procedures, and we have to re-examine re ourselves as, um, so that we have in place the, the right policies and procedures so that we can continue to provide um, the services to meet our mission. Happy to answer any questions. Mr. Mayor. Trustee Radishevsky. Can you elaborate a little bit on the recodification? Like is it a service that is helping us do that? Yes, or? yes. So, um, um, as part of the recodification, it's, there are uh, codifiers. They're companies that, uh, that, that do village codes. And um, so we entered into a contract uh, with a codifier. They take all of our ordinances, they take our existing code, and they essentially start from scratch. And then, then what they do is, from the, the, the first step is they go through and they find all of the, um, it's like on a website where you have dead links um, in a code, we have dead references, right? We have references to state statutes that no longer exist. Um, so that's one of the th things that we're, we do then is we try to not get, um, have specific state statutes. You know, we have general language to refer to um, state statute. So uh, they go through an entire uh, review. They give us a, a giant binder with thousands of questions. And it's, um, it's now with KTJ who is uh, going through and answering those, those questions. It'll go back to the codifier. They'll do that again, we'll get it. And we, we keep fine tuning it until we have a final product. 
when that final product is done, uh, obviously the board um, will have plenty of time to, to review it. Um, if the board is happy with the final product, then you adopt an ordinance accepting the new village code. You seal that baby up, and uh, that is now our new starting point. That's our new code going forward. And obviously we pass ordinances all the time. Ordinances that impact the code um, will get, pa will get uh, incorporated into the um, code. So in the old days, there used to be you know, binders. Um, nobody really goes to binders anymore. Everything is online. So the, the new code, once it's passed, will be online as well. Are they working with anybody in particular? from the village to, you know, yes, so, recoding? I mean, so before the, they do that, is there somebody who is consulting us regarding that? So the consultant is the codifier. Yes. So they, they're the ones that are helping us through that process. And like then- As they're making changes, are they talking to you about it so you know why? Right, so so what they did was they, they took it all and then they, they came up with a, a, a lot of questions that we need to give responses to. So yeah, so then, so we're we're part of that. We're very intricate in that process. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Okay. Those are all our presentations. Okay, great. All right. Well, let's just start at the top. Um, so I'm just going to go down the budget by group and if you guys get questions about stuff feel free to sing out so revenues i don't have anything non-departmental oh and first off overall and this just to save the board stuff um there have been a bunch of identified um salary and part-time full-time issues also i want to point out social security and medicare there's a lot of calculations in here that are off pretty significantly so and it's a pretty flat percentage so um, you know, I'll just point to elected officials goes from 2,000 to 14,000 for Social Security, and I don't have anybody in there getting 14,000 in Social Security. That, that's our, one of the corrections that's already been made. What's that? The elected officials, uh, that correction has already been made. Okay. So, anyways, so those are, uh, so those are all um, things to look at for salaries. Um, and then, uh, anybody got anything for non-departmental? Okay, great. Um, village manager's office. Anything there? Okay. Um, so I do have something for um, the village manager's office. George, uh, miscellaneous employee expense. We're, we're going from 11.8 to which was last year's budget and what we spent this year, and we're going to 18,000, so just take a look at it. Yep. I know it's a small amount, but still, it all adds up. Um, going into communications. Um, so, um, any, anybody got anything for communications? I have a few things, but. Okay, we'll start with training and education, jumping up from uh, 2,500 to 7,000, so look into that, please. Um, also, su subscriptions and publications. Um, one that I get all the time, I don't know if anyone else actually looks at it, I don't really look at it that much, I don't find it all that particularly useful, is the local government news. But if other people do, that's fine. Well, I, we, I, I, the staff uses that extensively. Okay. And then what's the Waymire 1500? Waymire uh, maintains a database of uh, photos for us that, they, that they've taken from many years past that they actually own and we have a subscription to. So they took pictures for us and we didn't get ownership of those? Correct. Make sure that everything going forward that they take. It's already have... set up that way. Yeah, no. so okay, so it was a, it was a sweetheart deal by my predecessor, got it. The things we keep finding. Um, uh, I think this is connected with the training and education is the, is the uh, business travel. So take a look at that. Then marketing promotion services, we didn't have any spending this year, or excuse me, very little, 26,000. 
Um, we've got video production for board meetings, um, 25 grand. I don't think we have that really anymore, right? Because we, we do it ourselves now. We do most of it ourselves, but we do require some professional video services uh, for some of our events, and that's when we utilize that. Well, take a look at it because we don't do it anymore. Um, we, we now do it in-house, and we didn't have that last year. So, um, and so take a look at that budget. Um, um, and then, so there's eighty thousand in here. We spent twenty-six. So, on the actual. So let's just take a look at it. Okay. Um, anybody else got anything for communications? Okay, elected officials, and uh, since there weren't a whole lot of changes, it didn't get run through me, but one thing we can do is we can cut back on elected officials' business travel. I mean, we've got actuals of like $325 spent and showing projected actuals of 4100 which it won't be, so just take a look and cut some of that back. Um, uh, same thing with the auto allowance and the miscellaneous employee expenses. It's not a lot of money, but cut a few grand out probably. Um, food and meals. Um, we, our actuals are actually below last year's budget, and then we increased the budget by uh, 2800 So I don't think we need to increase the budget, even though I know we're doing a little bit more regular breakfast with the mayors. I think we can still probably keep that budget down. So... Anything else for elected officials? Um, boards and commissions, and I don't know who does this particular budget, George, but there's a lot of expenses here we don't ever spend money in. So just get rid of those things in the budget. There's no need, reason to have 50 some thousand dollars in the budget for something we spend 30 grand on year after year. Yeah, um, well, a lot of that is for testing. Um, so um, uh, no, this isn't testing. This is postage and shipping, ads and publications, outsourcing, office supplies, printing and stationery. And I'm looking at our actuals. 2022 it was 32 grand. Okay. 2023 it was 20 grand. Um, and we have a $55,000 budget year after year after year. We don't even get close to hitting. And a lot of these things, there's no spending in it. So we'll cut it get, down. Yeah, just get rid of them. Um, Vets Commission, anything? No. Okay. Um, the, uh, for human resources, just training and education. I just want to make sure these are actual training programs because we had a big budget. We didn't spend it. Now we, it's a similar budget. I just want to make sure that it's just something that we just didn't do this year rather than something that keeps being in there as a placeholder. Uh, medical exams, I recall we talked about this. They've just gone way up, right, with all the new hires and everything. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, finance anything? We've already talked about the salary stuff, so take a look. I didn't have anything there. Anybody? Um, IT, I don't think I had anything there. Does anybody have anything on IT? Mr. Chairman. Trustee Compass. Uh, I think we've already mentioned, but this is like one of the areas where the group insurance looked extremely high compared to the others. Mm -hmm. So just want to note that. Yeah, just in general, look at that stuff. We're looking at group insurance, Social Security, Medicare, salaries. Um, so all the directors, what's the, what's the board's target for total increase in salary and benefits? What's our, what's our strategic? And everybody knows, 3%. So that's the target. So, um, okay. So that hasn't changed from before. So um, So one thing I noticed on so police, I have a couple of things. Well, one thing, court court time, 
it's not in the budget previously, but we keep spending money on it every year. So um, was, we were spending it from somewhere else and moving it over, and we just decided to put it in the budget finally. Question. Because we spent 113 in 2022, um, 100 so far for the actuals, but then there's nothing in the projected actuals, which should be high, at least higher than the 2023 actuals, which it's not. And then the proposed budget's 120. We'll get you an answer. Okay. I mean, it seems like it should be budgeted. It's just not in previous years. Um, Mr. Chairman. Trustee Compass. Under uh, PD, the, and, and this may be correct, it just was something that I noted, the retiree insurance is, has a 300% increase. And even looking at past years, it seemed like a pretty big jump, so I don't know if there was an indicator on in that. I think that's just actual cost. This retiree health insurance? Yeah. Yeah. That's just our actual experience this year. Okay. As the board may recall, the um, retiree health insurance is um, its something that will be eventually phased out, um, but um, even with our most recent contract, uh, retiree health insurance is only applicable to um, police, and, um, and now it, it, it ends at Medicare eligibility, but um, newer uh, hires after 2021 uh, are not uh, eligible for that uh, that to benefit. Yeah, so my main, my main question on this was just looking at the past years, it, it just seemed like we had a spike. So I, it, I'm sure there might be a reason for that. I just didn't understand what the source of it was. I think it's uh, a lot of it's COVID related, people not going to the doctor and then going to the doctor and having a worse experience. So we end up in, since we're self-insured, I think that probably covers that. And it's not a huge amount given that. Right, it's like forty grand or something like that, which given and, and just by their nature too, it's a it's an older demographic. Um, so police ESDA, the full time went from um, twenty two six to forty one three. Is that just an accounting thing because it's been budgeted for forty three this year and now it's forty two, and I think that's just part of Rich Miller's right. So um, the projected actuals don't match what, for example, our 2023 actuals so far is 33 grand, our projected actuals 22 grand. So just clean that kind of stuff up. It's probably more things like that, but it's just one that jumped out. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about the development services uh, Salaries, George, you and I. So we'll just we just get through and look at all that and look at your social security stuff as well. Um, I still saw outsourcing and development services. I thought we stopped outsourcing. So, um, but it, this looks like uh, so we're still doing fire reviews and some permit review stuff. Outsourcing some of that. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, ah, I see what this is. So the marketing and promotion services is, uh, it looks like it's uh, extra for the Visitors Bureau for Hampton Inn. For the the, the uh, motel tax, yeah, yeah, that'd be our share to the Southland Convention and Visitors Bureau. Okay. Is that I, if that's yeah. what you're looking at? Makes sense. Um, talked about that already. Um, oh, engineering. This is kind of a weird one, but if you could please just tell me what it is. It's a small amount. Um, pot. Uh, prio box pedestrian and bicycle counters. So we're looking into an application where we can count pedestrians. Uh, we do not have that ability. And it came up 
most of the bike paths that we are coming up with. So there is a data point that we have seen that others are providing, and then also for our taste of Orland Park. It's okay. a one-time uh, expense. It's a one-time expense, and we'll have a counter, and then we're good? Yes. Okay, got it. It was just a strange one, so that's why I'm asking. Um, Uh, more on public works, by the way, if anyone's got anything for public works. So, Joel, I think I know the answer to this, but this is other services jumps up a significant amount, almost a hundred grand. It looks like is that um, primarily um, for holiday light replacement? what it looks like. Yeah, I think it's itemized. $128,000 for holiday decoration refurbishment. Correct. Yeah, so we're we're looking at what might need to be refurbished. Okay. Um, that are starting to break for the holiday lights. And Joel, we're, we're also looking to um, incorporate newer lights, newer holiday decorations, right? Right. They, they yeah, there's another thing out. for replacements. Okay. There's two different ones. There's one for replacements and then there's one for refurbishment. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Trustee Thomas. Uh, the line on grounds maintenance, I, I yeah, I'm not I don't think that the proposed budget is incorrect, but I think that the the previous uh, 2023 projected actuals must have been mistyped in there. Um, just looking at past years because it's a 700% increase, so I, we know that. Well, not we know only it's that, not the 200. actuals already this year are six, almost 600 grand, and the projected right. actuals are 220. Yeah. Line 17, 17, 18 in the Excel sheet. Um, so, uh, but under this grounds maintenance, it's a pretty steep budget increase, uh, like a half a million dollars. I'm assuming that's rollovers for the most part. Looks like there's two uh, two landscaping projects that we are recommending the no mow on Lagrange and then the PD site. And so I believe that's in that same category. Okay. Got it. Um, bear with me while I work my way down here. Still on public works. You got a lot of stuff in here, Joel. <laughs> I, but I don't have a lot of stuff highlighted, so that's good. Oh, um, so Taste of Orland Park, you know, it, it shows the expenses. It doesn't show the revenue. Um, but uh, obviously expenses have gone up by like 90000 I think that's mostly for entertainment. Um, but let's see what we can do for revenue offsets, sponsorships, and other, given that we got that new location. So whatever we can do to offset those costs. Absolutely. <clears throat> so we're on rec, by the way. Um, anybody else have anything else? I don't think I have anything else. Those are the ones I had questions about. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Compass. So I, I know we, uh, we, we pick nits here and we, we look for human errors and all the rest of it, but I do want to call out a positive on the Recreation Public Works. So I noticed that uh, buildings maintenance uh, found some significant efficiency gains there. So between Public Works and Recreation, uh, thank you for that. Appreciate that hard work. Anything else? Yeah, just overall, I want to thank staff for all the hard work on this. I know we sat through a, a previous meeting, too, and that meeting was a lot less painful than previous years. It was relatively quick. 
Um, I know we had meetings scheduled all day and most of them were five minutes long. So a really good job paying attention to the details. Um, I think most of the issues now are that I see here, you know, like we've talked about, George, is around the salaries and the Social Security and the Medicare and all that stuff. Let's make sure, again, I think everyone knows 3%. That's what we got. I mean, it's just what we have to do if we're going to be sustainable for the long run in the village because our revenues just don't go up like that. So, um, but uh, so good work by everybody. I appreciate it. And I know there's still some work to do, but. I think we all appreciate all the all the efforts and uh, also all the effort that was done April through June, um, because that was a lot of heavy lift um, for the capital. I, I know how much work that was for six or eight weeks, um, because I was knee deep in it, <laughs> um, and it was a lot. And you know, I, I think uh, I, I know the board appreciates it, but they probably don't understand exactly how much work was there, because I, like I said, I was there going through it with you, so. I do know how much work was done in those six weeks, but that huge heavy lift is gonna pay huge dividends going forward uh, for the next five years. Um, now it's just kind of adding a year to it every year. and It's a hell of a lot easier <laughs> than, uh, than what we went through. So, um, so thanks again for all the hard work. We, we certainly appreciate it. I know we tell you we appreciate it, but I just want you to hear it again. Anything else? George, do you have anything else? No. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Call the roll. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Castina. Aye. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Compass. Aye. Trustee Radishevsky. Aye. Mayor Peacock. Aye. Adjourned. <laughs>